Hi, I'm Jenna, an upholster and designer, and today is Upholstery 101. I scoured the local thrift stores to find a simple dining room chair so I can teach you the basics. It's not as hard as you think. First step, we're gonna deconstruct the chair. When you're deconstructing the chair, you wanna make sure to hold on to all of its parts. So I like to keep a Ziploc baggie nearby so you don't lose any pieces. When you go back to reassemble it, what we're gonna do next is we're going to remove the old upholstery fabric. Take the razor blade. We're just gonna go right around here, away from the foam, and just cut quickly. Now, we hold on to all of our scraps in upholstery because sometimes you have to use these as a frame of reference. I'm gonna cut off the old dust cover. This part can be very therapeutic. We have this edge here that has staples in it. So I'm just gonna cut it in a few places. And then you're just gonna grab one of the corners you just did, and you're gonna do this. The name of the game is just speed here. The faster you get your staples removed, the faster we can start recovering these babies. Sometimes you just need a staple remover to get in there. Put one corner of the tip underneath and lift up like so. And we don't need to take out all of the staples. Some of them I'm going to leave because they're holding the foam that we're going to reuse in the reupholstery. You just want to make sure that they're flush with the wood. If any of them are sticking out, you need to remove them. So these all look good. Now on to the outside back of the back cushion. We really want to try to remove this entire back piece as one because we want to try to use this as a pattern. See how there's two staples right there? We're gonna take the razor blade and we're gonna cut between it. And don't worry about cutting the welting cord inside the fabric because we're gonna replace that. So we're gonna get our needle nose pliers into one of the areas where we cut. We're just gonna lift up. Coming up very nicely. All right. See how we got that off in one piece? Gently pull away the foam from the old fabric. Because in upholstery, we try to be as green as possible and reuse as much of the inside as we can. We need to remove all of the remaining staples. We've got both of the dining seat cushions deconstructed. Now we're gonna clean our workspace. This is Dacron. We call it poly wrap in uh, quilting and sewing, but this is Dacron when it comes to upholstery fabric. It's thicker and it's multi-layered. So we're actually going to tear this in half. But literally you just pull the Dacron like so and pull it apart into two halves. This is just acting as a polyester lubricant between the foam and the fabric. All right, I just went and grabbed some spray glue. I got my mask and we're just gonna spray it onto the foam and adhere the Dacron to the foam. Across here. Pull it this way, smooth it out. Now we're gonna grab a pair of scissors and you're just going to cut back any excess. Don't need to be too technical about this part as long as it comes to the edge of the seat and wraps just a little bit over the edge. Now it's time to start adding some upholstery fabric. And we're going funkadelic on this one. Now, when you're working with something circular shape, you wanna pick a non-directional pattern or a solid. With this one, since it's so busy, you're not gonna notice it if it's pulled a little bit tighter in one direction um, because your eye keeps traveling throughout the pattern. I'm just gonna cut the fabric off. I know it might seem wasteful having this much extra fabric around it, but you have to have something to grab onto with your hands and manipulate the fabric around the surface. Now let's get our staple gun. The biggest mistake I see novice upholsters do is use a hand stapler. Take your hand stapler and chuck it. It just doesn't do the job. You need a air compressor staple gun. The air gets behind the staple and actually sinks it into the wood, which keeps the fabric that much more tight. Just adds a little bit of extra oomph. So what I'm gonna teach you first off is how to do a tack staple. 
it's not the final staple. You're just getting the fabric manipulated and placed where you want it. And then you're gonna go back around and put the finishing staples. You're gonna take the nose of your staple gun, place it on the wood, and then you're going to lift up one of the corner the staple like so. The part that's down in the wood will act as a sewing needle and will keep the upholstery fabric in place. And then you have one side that's up so that you can easily come through with your needle nose after you have put all of your final staples in and just pull it up easy peasy without damaging the fabric. Make sure that the seat is centered within our piece of fabric. I'm gonna take the top, pull it not super tight, and then we're gonna do our first tack staple. Remember to lift one corner, do it in place. Then you're literally going to flip it, go directly across from that tack staple, pull it, wrap it around, tack in the place. Okay, so we have 12 o'clock, six o'clock, and now we're gonna do three and nine. The reason we're doing this is we're slowly manipulating the fabric around the circle. If you just started stapling it around the side, that's how you get all the bunches up of fabric. Now we're gonna do the corners. All right, so we did the corners and then you just keep doing it again and again. So you see where these little loose parts are? You're gonna go pull it down tight with the tack. And you just keep going around until you get it about as even as possible. So I have all of my tack staples in place, but it's starting to look nice and tight and actually round around the seat. Imagine that. All right, so we're gonna cut back this excess fabric. Don't go too crazy, because you know, once you cut it, you can't put it back. <laughs> With the tack staples, it has helped manipulate the fabric around the circular surface. Now we're just going to tack down the fabric permanently into place. You're just going to pull it nice and tight. Use your hand, smooth it out. Get rid of any wrinkles. And then final staple, this is when we're gonna put it directly against the wood. I'm still gonna go directly across from it. All right, see like here's like a little extra bump right there. Just gonna get our thumbs, pull it out. However, I will say there is no such thing as perfection in upholstery. So just, you know, remember to be kind to yourself while you're doing this process because I've been doing upholstery my entire life and there are still projects that I find myself screaming into a pillow. Let's cut back some of this excess fabric. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, now we need to start removing some of the tack staples. I'm just gonna pull it up. And you'll see these little bumps here and there. I'm just gonna take it, even it out, pull it back. A staple in the middle. See how we're getting the straightness? Don't worry about getting it too perfect. This is the underneath side of your chair seat. You've got people down there looking at your chairs, you got bigger problems. We have all of the excess fabric stapled down nice and flat. Now it's time for dust cover. Dust cover is nothing really fancy. It's just the cherry on top of your upholstery job. You cover the, the staples that you put into place and you're gonna leave about an inch of just the fabric. You're not doing tack staples, you're doing finishing staples with this. So you're just gonna, and then you're gonna do exactly what we did with the fabric. We're gonna go directly across from the staple you just put into the wood base and add another one. So as you're starting to see, there's just a lot of steps in upholstery you repeat on different parts. So once you know the basics, you're ready to have some fun with some fabric. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's pretty gosh darn close. Now we're gonna turn around and do the same thing to the inside back. We have the other half of the Dacron that I pulled apart from the other piece. Okay, and then we're gonna start doing our Tack staples, repeat exactly what we did on the inside seat. 
we've got all of the tack staples into place. Now we're gonna start going around and putting in the finishing staples. The next step is the outside back. So we're going to make a template, aka pattern, for the outside back so we can recreate the original here. So we're literally gonna turn this over and trace it. I'm using cardboard backing as my material for my pattern. I'm just tracing around the seat cushion and we're just gonna cut out the pattern. All right, now we're gonna cut out our circle. We got our nice round circle cut out for the outside back. Now we're gonna cut the welting. The welting is gonna be one long inch and a half wide strip. Now I do a lot of welting, so I have a bunch of plexiglass cut to different widths. So, you know, just trying to work smarter, not harder, always. And you always wanna cut more welting fabric than you actually need. The worst thing to be would be short on the welting fabric. We got one long piece of the welting fabric cut out. Now we're gonna take it along with the circle that we just cut out and head on over to the sewing machine to sew it all together. Now we're gonna take the long piece of welting fabric that we cut out and we're going to sew it around the welting cord. This is an industrial sewing machine. It has more power, torque overall, and we need it to get through the thickness of this fabric. I'm using a welting foot that's specifically made to sew welting piping cord. I'm gonna bend the fabric evenly around the welting cord. So you just want it to be just like that when you're sewing. Trim it off. Now that that's sewn, we'll move onto the circle. And what we'll do is we'll slowly sew around the circle Tail is looking nice and round as we sew around. Now that we got the edge of the outside back all sewn down into place, time to add the welting cord. All right, we're getting towards the end of attaching the welting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the welting cord so they butt up right next to each other. Okay, and then we're gonna just leave enough fabric to wrap around this end. This is exactly what I'm talking about when you need an industrial sewing machine to do upholstery projects, because right now we are sewing through basically six layers of fabric with how I have everything folded over. In my opinion, marrying the welting together is the hardest part of this entire upholstery project. There we go. All right, now we have the welting sewn completely onto the outside back. Let's go attach it. So we have our original foam that we tore off. We're gonna put it back in place. We're gonna hide the staple in between the welting and the fabric. Get right in there. This is when you really start to see all your hard work come together. Very exciting. Just need some staples right here. So now that we've got the outside back all attached, I'm gonna feel for the two, first two hardware holes, which are right there. And then we're just gonna make a little notch, a little cut. Now it's time to reassemble our chair. Nice and tight. is, but I don't like his wrenches. All right, she's ready to set on. If you like this project and want to see more, give it a thumbs up and follow HGTV.